Welcome to Highland's second quarter 2023 earnings call. During the second quarter, we hosted our first ever Investor Day on June 27th in Austin, Texas at our headquarters. We had more than 60 in-person attendees and over 400 viewers on the webcast to tune in to learn more about Hylian's go-forward strategy. We showcased the building of our first production Hypertruck ERX powertrain, as well as unveiled newly planned product offerings and what the go-forward market strategy will be for these products. To start today's call, I'd like to share an update on the market landscape and perspectives on some recent events that have taken place in the electrification space. As you may be aware, last Monday, another leader in the space filed for bankruptcy, and unfortunately, they are one of a number of companies in our industry that have faced financial and other issues in recent months. We've also seen some providers experience significant losses on their initial units as they seed the market with their products. Hylion faces many challenges as well, and we are working diligently to avoid the same outcome and to grow shareholder value. Hylion has been trading near or below our cash value over the last few quarters. However, one of the differences between Hylion and others in the space is our cash position. In light of this, we continue to assess our business model and strategic priorities to ensure we utilize our capital as effectively as possible. We have seen significant shifts in the electrification space over the past few years that have impacted us and our peers, and we expect that these shifts will continue to impact Hylion's business model. For example, we continue to see component price increases from our suppliers, have experienced supply chain constraints that have impacted our development timeline, and have seen both positive developments and potentially wavering on regulatory mandates. As a result, we see fleets adjusting their electrification strategies as they move further along the path to adoption. Going forward, we will continue to look for ways to optimize our business, conserve our cash position, bolster our product offering to help prevent decontenting by OEMs, and deliver solutions that meet fleets' needs. We've already executed on opportunities like our acquisition of the Carno generator technology and our development partnership with Hyzon to build a fuel cell powered vehicle. We will continue to look for ways to strengthen our business model and to optimize our business, conserve cash, and deliver products to customers. Shifting now to the Hypertruck ERX, I'd like to share an update on where we are with respect to launching the Hypertruck ERX powertrain later this year. As just mentioned, we have begun the installation of our first production truck and we plan to ship 30 trucks by the end of the year. On our Hypertruck ERX commercialization timeline that we unveiled seven quarters ago, we had planned to begin extended fleet trials in the second quarter of this year. Unfortunately, we have pushed the start of these trials out into the third quarter due to delays in receiving components needed to build our latest fleet of pre-production vehicles. However, we expect to start these trials in the coming weeks. We are presently working with fleets to confirm orders and delivery timing for their initial production trucks. We see extended fleet trials as the final stage for many fleets in their decision process of procuring our solution. We are presently completely booked through Q4 with trials with various fleets. With the discussions we have ongoing and the interest we've received from fleets, we are confident in our ability to deliver 30 trucks by the end of this year. As we get feedback from these fleet trials and initial adoption, we will assess our ramp up plans for 2024 and come back with further clarity on our projected volume ramp. Even since last quarter, when we shared that we'd be shifting our delivery ramp and restructuring our founders agreements, we have seen further unexpected price increases from our supply base. This speaks to how the electrification market is still in its early stages and manufacturing, supply base, and pricing are still being worked out. As we have previously shared, we are working to pass along some of these price increases onto fleets, which will allow us to sell the trucks while reducing the gross loss we expect to realize on the first units. Another milestone on our commercialization journey is to achieve or complete our CARB, EPA, and NHTSA certifications relating to the powertrain. I am pleased to share that we have successfully passed all required Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards, or FMVSS, to satisfy our NHTSA requirements. 
We also remain on track with CARB and believe we'll have this complete in Q3. Thus, we are confident in our readiness to begin shipping trucks in the fourth quarter. Also during Investor Day, we unveiled that the next variant of the Hypertruck ERX will be the powertrain in a day cab truck. When we initially selected the launch of the Hypertruck ERX on a sleeper truck, we believed that fleets would adopt plug-in electric trucks for day cab applications and range extender electric for sleeper truck applications. As fleets have begun adopting plug-in electric trucks, they are finding that the range is much more limited than they expected, and the charging infrastructure either doesn't exist or is difficult and costly to install. Thus, over the last couple of quarters, we have seen increasing interest from fleets in a Hypertruck ERX powertrain on a day cab vehicle. We are therefore moving forward with initial development and are planning to have the powertrain ready in 2025. As we embark on this development, we also plan to incorporate design improvements to help with cost and weight. We've heard from fleets that the additional weight of the Hypertruck ERX sleeper variant will hinder its ability to operate in weight out hauling applications. Thus, for the day cab, we are exploring ways to reduce battery and tank sizes to remove weight in addition to the savings of moving to a day cab. In Q2, CARB passed the Advanced Clean Fleet, or ACF, mandate, which will require fleets to start adopting vehicles that qualify for ZEV credits in 2027. I am pleased to share that the Hypertruck ERX powertrain will qualify for the same level of credit as a battery electric or a fuel cell truck will qualify for under this mandate. ACF first regulates adoption of day cab vehicles and then later covers sleeper trucks starting in 2030. This is an additional reason why we plan to add a day cab variant of the Hypertruck ERX powertrain to our product portfolio. We also outlined our development plans around the integration of the Cummins 15-liter natural gas engine. We presently utilize the Cummins 12-liter natural gas engine, which is CARB and EPA certified for 2023, but the Cummins 12-liter engine will only be EPA certified in 2024, meaning it can't be sold in California. Thus, we'll work to integrate the new Cummins 15-liter natural gas engine into the Hypertruck ERX by late 2024, which is expected to be both CARB and EPA certified. Now, shifting to the Carno, we unveiled a representative model of what our planned 200-kilowatt stationary power Carno generator will look like, including approximate dimensions and its small footprint as depicted on this slide. We continue to see strong interest that's exceeding our expectations for a stationary Carno solution that has the ability to solve various problems. We see it as a fit for prime power applications as we anticipate being able to produce electricity for less than the cost of grid power in most locations. It could also be used for peak shaving to help levelize power demand on the grid and be used to produce electricity in areas where the grid power is unavailable. The Carno generator offers clean, low-cost electricity, has a smaller footprint than conventional generators, requires limited maintenance, and operates at very low noise levels. The Carno is also fuel agnostic, able to run on conventional fuels like natural gas, propane, diesel, and even on zero carbon emission fuels like hydrogen and ammonia. We also showcased how the Carno units can be stacked together to produce greater power levels while not compromising any of its benefits. For reference, the footprint of a 20-foot shipping container filled with Carno generators could produce more than two megawatts of power output. This footprint is half to one-third the size of conventional generators, and even a tenth the size of some new clean generator technologies coming on the market today. We see the path to the Carno stationary market as achievable over the next 12 to 18 months and it broadens our ability to provide electrified solutions to the commercial vehicle market by powering EV charging units. In the slide presentation accompanying this call, you can see that we've showcased what the key milestones will be for both the Hypertruck Carno and the Carno stationary generator over the next few years. We are planning to begin initial deployments of the Carno stationary generator next year, and we expect that these will be revenue generating. We are already well underway in discussions with likely customers around their initial deployment of the generator. 
We are also continuing with the development to integrate the Carno generator into the Hypertruck powertrain. As we work to integrate and validate the Hypertruck Carno over the next few years, we plan to be ready for initial fleet trials starting in 2026. The third variant of our Hypertruck powertrain is a hydrogen fuel cell version. A couple of quarters ago, we announced a partnership with Hyzon where we kicked off the integration of Hyzon's latest 200 kilowatt fuel cell technology with Hylion's Hypertruck powertrain technology on an initial development vehicle. We are pleased to share that this development has been going very well and this vehicle is up and running now and completed its initial test drives around a test track just a few weeks ago. This project remains on track and will be complete by the end of this year. I will now turn the call over to John to share more about the financials from this past quarter. Thank you, Thomas, and good morning, everyone. Turning to our financial results, for the second quarter, we reported revenue of 266,000 from hybrid system sales compared to 172,000 in the second quarter of a year ago. Operating expenses totaled 38.5 million, an increase of 6.3 million compared to the second quarter of last year. The year-over-year -year increase in spending is due to growth in research and development costs, partly offset by lower SG&A expenses. R&D costs were up 7.4 million in the quarter due to higher expenses related to Hypertruck ERX powertrain development and Carno. Powertrain development costs were up 3.7 million as we expense production truck components that were received in the quarter. I mentioned last quarter that until we complete R&D work on the Hypertruck ERX system, all component purchases will continue to be expensed, even if those parts will ultimately be used in production powertrains that are later sold to customers. The impact of this expensing was partly offset by lower expenses related to other R&D work on the Hypertruck ERX system in the quarter. Going forward, we expect that expensing of production component purchases will have a negligible impact on our R&D costs as we make progress towards Hypertruck ERX system commercialization. The second driver of higher R&D costs in the quarter was Carno expenses that we did not have in 2022. As a reminder, we purchased Carno technology from GE late in the third quarter of 2022, and therefore comparisons of year-over-year -year expenses in the first three quarters of this year need to account for this difference. Total Carno expenses in the second quarter were 3.7 million. In total, Hylion reported a net loss of 35.2 million for the second quarter, which is up from the $33.5 million loss the company reported a year ago as lower cost of sales and higher interest income this year nearly offset higher operating expenses. Looking at year-to-date performance for the first half of the year, revenue was 576,000 compared to 512,000 in 2022. Total operating expenses were 70.4 million compared to 57.9 million in 2022. Again, the increase in expenses was driven by higher R&D expenses of 12.5 million, of which 5.4 million consisted of expensing of production component purchases, partly offset by lower costs for other powertrain R&D work. The remaining 7.1 million of higher year-over-year R&D costs was driven by Carno expenses in the first half. Finally, SG&A expenses in the first half were approximately flat with 2022. Our net loss year-to-date was 64.1 million compared to 60.6 .6 million in the first half of 2022. We ended the quarter with total cash, short-term and long-term investments of $354 million compared to $422 million at the end of 2022 and $385 million at the end of the first quarter of this year. We spent $31 million in the second quarter compared to $37 million in the first quarter and $27 million in the second quarter of 2022. As we discussed last quarter, we are taking actions that will help reduce cash burn and expect that these actions will significantly reduce operating expenses, capital spending, and working capital growth. We continue to hold to the guidance that we shared at our investor day back in June of approximately 130 million of total operating expenses, despite the unexpected impact of production truck component expensing this year. Also, we continue to project cash consumption of less than 150 million, including cash operating expenses, working capital growth, and capital expenditures. 
As previously noted, we ended the second quarter with $354 million of total capital, which gives us flexibility to continue hypertruck ERX commercialization work, including initial truck deliveries, as well as carnal development work. We expect to finish the year with a total capital balance of around $275 million, which will give us financial flexibility into the future. We have no plans to raise capital this year, but will remain opportunistic in 2024 and beyond if market conditions are favorable for raising additional equity capital. With that, I'll turn it back over to Thomas. Thanks, John. As we wrap up this call and move to Q&A, I'd like to encourage anyone who hasn't yet watched our Investor Day video to do so. This presentation offers a great overview on both the Hypertruck powertrain technology as well as the Carnot generator. The recording can be found on Hylian's YouTube channel. We will now open the call up to Q&A.